In this presentation, we are going to discuss about the basics of a steam turbine, which will include working of a steam turbine, types of a steam turbine, turbine stage design, <coughs> compounding of a steam turbine, flow pattern through the steam turbine, and various configurations of the steam turbine. <coughs> Actually, a steam turbine is a device that converts the potential and thermal energy of a stream of fluid, which is a stream, into the mechanical energy by passing the stream through a system of friction moving fan like blades that cause the, the blades to rotate. This turbine looks like a large wheel with many small radiating blades around its stream. A rotary steam turbine that is a continuous stream of fluid which is the superheated steam to turn the shaft that can drive the various machineries. <coughs> Actually, a steam turbine is a prime mover in which the kinetic energy of a steam is converted to the mechanical power by the impulsive reaction of the fluid with a series of buckets or blades arranged about the circumference of a wheel or cylinder. <clears throat> the interior of a steam turbine has got several sets of nozzles which is called <clears throat> buckets or blades and then it has got the moving blades which we call buckets also. One sort of set of a stationary blade is connected to the casing and one set of the then after that the one set of the rotating, rotating blade is connected to the shaft. The interior of the turbine is comprised of several sets of blades or bucket. One set of a stationary blade is connected to the casing and the other set of the blade are the rotating blade which are connected to the shaft which rotates the shaft. The sets immerse with certain minimum clearance with the size and the configuration of sets varying to the ex efficiently exploiting the expansion of the stage at each stage. A steam turbine produces rotary motion and serve as a prime mover with variable speed to drive pump, compressor, generator, etc. <coughs> Here we can look about the working principle, basic working principle of the steam turbine. Here on the left hand side you can see the nozzles through the steam is coming and this where the pressure of the steam gets reduced and the high velocity passes through the circumference of the rotating wheel. <clears throat> you can see in the central drawing that this is this is the nozzle, this is your rotor where these are all the blades fixed on the rotor and on the extreme right side you can see how the steam is hitting the blades of the rotor and thus how the rotor is rotating. <coughs> Here in this slide you can see the nozzles steam passes through the nozzles like this where the velocity of the steam is increased by reducing the pressure of the steam and then it passes through the moving blade. The middle section shows you actually the nozzles in our turbines the, there are a lot of nozzles in each row and there are different sections separated. This is the separation. This is one section. This is another section. In the right hand side, you can see the, how the steam is coming out from the nozzle and then it is passing through the moving blade. After passing through the first moving blade, the steam is now entering the again the fixed nozzle where the direction of the steam gets changed so that the steam enters at an angle which is equal to the inlet angle or angle of incidence of the next blade. <clears throat> there are basically two types of turbines, impulse turbine and reaction turbine. In impulse turbine, 
pressure drop occurs only in the stationary blade with a net increase is the steam velocity <coughs> across the stage. In the reaction stage, actually the pressure drops in both the fixed nozzle and the moving blade and the velocity generated is used in the moving blade. On <coughs> the diagram, we can see left hand side is showing the impulse turbine, right hand side is showing the reaction turbine. If you see in the impulse turbine, the <coughs> When the steam is passing through the nozzle, this is a nozzle section, steam is passing through the nozzle. At that time, if you see on the graph, the pressure of the steam is getting reduced and the velocity of the steam is getting increased. Now, when it passes through the moving blade, the velocity of the steam is getting reduced but the pressure is constant. This is impulse turbine. In case of reaction turbine, on the right hand side, if you see when the steam is passing through the nozzle, the pressure is dropping, velocity is increasing. But again, when it is passing through the moving blade, that time also the pressure is increasing and the velocity which is increasing due to this kind of pressure is also <coughs> reduced in the moving blade. In this slide, we are going to talk about the <coughs> turbine stage design. In turbine stage design, actually, what if you see on the right hand side, <coughs> there is a nozzle after that there is a moving blade, again there is a nozzle stand or again there is a moving blade. <coughs> so, actually this particular drawing shows you a Curtis wheel where in the Curtis wheel what happens is that pressure drops in the first stage of nest uh, of fixed nozzles and then it passes through the first set of the moving blade so the pressure gets reduced in the first stage of the nozzle and the velocity is increased to the maximum when it passes through the next stage when it passes through the next stage <coughs> of the nozzle here there is no change in the pressure no change in the velocity again when it goes to the next moving blade the velocity drops <coughs> to the minimum. This arrangement is in the high pressure stage of the steam turbine and this is called <coughs> Curtis wheel. So in reaction, total, bread pres total pressure drop is provided equally between the stationary and lubing blade whereas in impulse turbine it is <coughs> only pressure drops only in the nozzle. Impulse turbines are very high pressure one. Pure impulse or pure re reaction is very difficult for us <coughs> to make. So, more, uh, except the first stage of the turbine, all other stage of the turbines are mixture of impulse and reaction turbine. <coughs> Now we talk about the compounding of the turbine. Compounding of a steam turbine is a method of extracting steam energy in a number of stages rather than in a single stage in a steam turbine. And compounding as multi stages with more than one set of nozzles and rows. This arrangement is in series. And you know the blades are keyed to the shaft which rotates the shaft. And a multi-stage turbine is compounded as it is required for the process requirement. Now, in this slide, we are going to talk about compounding of the <coughs> impulse turbine. Now, compounding of the install, uh, steam turbine means it is basically the Curtis wheel where what is happening if you see in the diagram that when the steam is entering to the fixed nozzle, the pressure of the steam is dropping. 
then in the moving blade in the moving blade pressure is constant while velocity is increasing when again it is moving further <coughs> then again when it is going to the fixed nozzle in the second stage when it is going to the fixed nozzle of second stage again the pressure is dropping and the velocity is increased which is again reduced in the moving blade again this sequence is going on repeating a stage after a stage till the next <coughs> last stage of the turbine now we talk about the velocity compounded steam turbine as i have explained you earlier it is the curtis wheel of the turbine and in velocity compounding what happens is that the if you see on the right hand side <coughs> graph the pressure drops in the first nozzle itself and the velocity of the steam uh, velocity is increased now when it goes to the moving blade some pressure is dropped some pressure is dropped <coughs> in the, then it passes through the guide blade again in the moving blade some pressure is dropped again it passes through the guide blade some pressure is the drop it means in a velocity compounded turbine pressure drops in the only the first stage as but <coughs> the velocity drops in a number of <coughs> blades so actually curtis wheel is a pressure <coughs> curtis wheel actually is a two impulse <coughs> blade fixed blade two impulse fixed no nozzles and blades turbine in the curtis wheel what is happening is that the pressure is dropping only in the first nozzle and it is constant in the second nozzle and both the moving blade whereas the velocity is increasing in the first nozzle it is reducing in the first moving blade it is constant in the moving blade uh, second moving blade and it reduces in the next moving blade <coughs> now we talk about the pressure velocity compounding <coughs> of the turbine now you see almost or except the first stage of the turbine all the stages of the turbines are pressure velocity compounded as you see when the steam is passing through each nozzle the what is happening is the pressure is dropping and the velocity is decrease <coughs> <clears throat> again you see here pressure is increasing it is velocity is dropping both in moving blade and fixed blade and that's how finally the steam is going out now <clears throat> actually what we are using is pressure well and velocity compound turbine where you can see the nozzle the moving blade the nozzle the moving blade nozzle the moving blade like a series of <clears throat> moving and uh, blades and the fixed nozzles now almost all multi stage turbines are axial flow turbine axial flow turbines mean the flow of the turbine takes place in direction of the shaft <coughs> or in a language language chudnal direction so there are number of fixed and moving blades if you see s indicates the fixed stationary blade r indicates the moving blade you can see that in each you what you see is that the pressure is continuously dropping stage wise whereas in every <coughs> fixed nozzle the pressure is dropping then the velocity is increasing pressure is dropping velocity is increasing in the reaction side it is happening in both the fixed and the nozzles and that's how the steam flows through the turbine <coughs> now we will see <coughs> different type of the steam turbines in this slide i have shown you the <coughs> single stage back pressure steam turbine here the steam enters from this side passes through the <coughs> two wheels which is the basically the curtis wheel impulse wheel and then it goes out and then the turbine has got gland casing governing system <coughs> a steam chest 
over a speed trip, bearing base, all these things we will be discussing in the steam turbine components. In a multi stage extraction black turbine, then there are bigger turbines where you see what is happening. It is a there are so many numbers of stages in the turbine, and after passing through that, is finally the steam goes out. At a back pressure, this steam is used in process for heating because it has got some pressure. And the, here is a control valve through the steam enters. This is the governing system. We will be discussing in detail. These are the bearing sections, and this is the turning gear. All these things we will be discussing in our slide called a steam turbine <coughs> components. Another type of turbine is where there are, it is a multi stage turbine, but the steam is extracted, a steam is extracted from the turbines at different stages and it is used for process heating. And then the remaining part of the steam passes through the condenser where the steam is condensed in the condenser and the water which is now called condensate is used for heating of the boiler feed water. Advantage of taking extraction of the steam is that it <clears throat> you see what happens when a steam passes through the condenser the latent heat of the steam is lost in the condenser. But when we are extracting the steam and using it for some process heating, we are also <clears throat> utilizing the latent heat of the steam, which increase, improves our overall cycle efficiency. When a steam is extracted from the turbine, actually the dryness fraction or the order dryness of the steam increases and it allows us to pass this through more number of stages. <clears throat> then here in this slide I have shown you multi <clears throat> casing steam turbines. If you see on the left hand side photograph this is your HP turbine high pressure turbine then steam goes to the boiler for again reheating and the temperature of steam is again equal to the first stage inlet temperature. It is expanded in the low pressure and through a crossover pipe it goes to the low pressure side. <coughs> Here also you can see in this animation through the cross over pipe the steam is going to the low pressure and it is a double flow gives you, which provides you more surface area. Here in the <coughs> diagram we have shown how the turbine is intricated. This is how a one directional turbine is intricated. This is a high pressure, this is intermediate pressure which has got flow on both sides and some bigger turbines have got two low pressure sides. We call it LP1 and LPT and both are double flow turbines. <coughs> So, thank you very much for your patience hearing and this series will, fo is follow, will follow with part 2 which includes the various steam turbine components and their working and part 3 which will include the sub-systems of the steam turbine which helps the turbine to operate properly. <clears throat> Thank you very much.